Hello and welcome back Buckpole viewers. Today, as you can tell, I'm definitely not the star of this show. Uh, today I will be making paracord call lanyards. Um, I'm going to start out with a basic call lanyard, uh, just a two drop lanyard. And then from there I'm going to do a second video on how to do a thicker neck band. And then I'm going to do a third video on how to add more drops to it. Um, the first base pan lanyard is a really good lanyard for someone that is just starting out looking to learn how to make them. It's a very easy project and it's really nice especially if you're like a deer hunter or something like that where you only need one or two calls on you at a time. Um, from there I do the padded neck just kind of an upgrade um, to the original and if you plan on doing more than two drops to it definitely a great idea for being able to do more with it. Uh, the stuff you will need, you will need a 10 to 12 foot piece of paracord and a second piece in the 10 to 12 foot range. Um, if you want a solid color lanyard, you use two of the same pieces of the same color. If you want two different colors, you use two different color paracords. Um, from there, I have a flattened spoon that I use to um, kind of massage over all my melted ends. I have a lighter. Um, don't have my good lighter tonight, but I do have a lighter. Uh, so any lighter will work, but better lighters are always make life easier. I have a good sharp pair of scissors. I have a fabric tape. Um, a tape measure would work as well. Um, I just use that to make my measurements. And then I have two knitting needles. Uh, they make it a little bit easier to actually feed the cord through. I've done it before barehanded and I've done it with stuff like drill bits. Uh, using a number two Phillips drill bit that you would put into an impactor works really well for that as well if you don't have something like a knitting needle. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this stuff around and I'm going to show you where you go from here. The first thing you do is you take your two pieces of paracord and you have to find the middle of them. Um, the braid that you're going to be using to make the actual lanyard itself is a round braid and I will show you exactly how I do my round braid and then how I tie it off and stuff at the end as well. Um, I actually sell these fairly regularly um, on eBay and on a few of the Facebook pages in the fall and I usually get about 20 to thirty dollars for them depending on how elaborate they are but if you start out you find the center of your two pieces of paracord uh, mark the two pieces and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to loop them together and I'll see if I can get this in here and I'll show you you want to basically loop one inside the other let's see if I can get that to focus right like that um, you want it to you want it to be one looped right inside of the other. So if you were to pull them, you wouldn't be able to pull them apart. Um, for me, you can turn up either end. Uh, I'm right-handed, so I prefer actually to have my left side. If you can see, see how my left is my highest one of my four, and then my right is actually my lower. What you want to do is you want to take your top left come around in between your two here and then you want to pull through and let me show you how that starts out so your first one is around and behind and hopefully you can right there you can see that it comes around and through then you want to continue take your highest one go in between the other two and down around your bottom one and what you're going to do is you're going to continue to keep doing this where you take your highest one and go in between and then down around and through. Um, if you can't see it the best, you can always look up uh, how to do a round braid, a uh, paracord round braid. But if you get to a certain point, you can start actually flipping a few of them through at a time. Uh, just make sure you keep them separate. 
and you'll end up with this right here. If you look all of my, let's see if I can get that back in focus for you guys. All of my light tan ones are right straight in a row here. And then if you rotate a little bit, all of my dark ones are in a nice straight row right here. And if you want your colors to be in perfectly straight rows, you just start that way and you do it that way. Um, if you do not want perfectly straight rows, give me just a few seconds to undo this because I want to do, I want to actually do a swirl pattern with this one. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second as soon as I get this unwound and then find my center place again. Um, if you want to do a swirl, it's the exact same pattern, um, or the exact same steps to start, except there's one slight variation. And we'll go like this. We'll pull our paracord through, and we will get to the center right here. So we've got our two centers here and here, and when you want to do two, or when you want to do the twirl, what you do is you will actually run them across like this. Let's see if I can get that to focus for you guys. You run them across like this, uh, one under the other, and then you'll take the one that's on the top in your left hand, and you'll put it around, behind, and you'll hook the bottom one on your right side. And what that does is that brings basically your same color is going to be in a loop around your opposite color. Let's see if we can right about there. Um, it'll bring it around and behind and you'll start like that. And then what you want to do is you want to take your opposite color, uh, in this case our dark brown, and you want to bring it around between the dark brown that's on the top and the light brown that's on the bottom here and through and you want to bring it around um, you'll continue this pattern just like this you'll bring your highest one down around and through and then you'll go down between the other two and around and you will continue to do this pattern um, until you get to your desired neck length um, most of my recommendation would be that you make them about 30 inches long. From there, you can make them longer. Uh, just as an idea, I have a pretty good size head and I wear glasses and a 30 inch with the neck band and stuff will fit over the top of mine. Now if you look here, let's see if I can get the focus enough. All right, there we go. You get uh, light, dark, light, dark, and you're gonna get that all the way. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna look like you have a swirl pattern all the way around your whole lanyard. So um, that's the one I'm gonna prefer when I do two colors. I usually prefer to do a swirl. Um, I do the traditional one more of if I have the same color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause you guys right here, and I'm gonna bring you back in when I've got 30 inches of it. So. You guys can uh, pause it right here too as well if you're making it along with me. And then you can pick up as soon as you hit your 30 inch. Okay, welcome back. And this is the braid that we have done. As you can see, it's basically wound in a bunch of spirals. Um, this piece actually, I just measured it out, is a little bit closer to about 32 and a half to 33 inches um, one thing you can do to find out if it's the right length you take it right here and you combine right where the end of your braid is with the beginning and then you take it and you put it over your head and if you like how comfortably it goes over your head you're good and if you want it longer you need to just take the time to make it longer now from here what I do is I keep these pieces in this hand 
and I pinch the two center ones off. Um, you'll see that I have a flap here, a flap here, and they'll be opposite colors, and then the two center ones are the same color in this case, or they're opposite colors. If you're doing uh, the other braid with two different colors, it'll be the same color, and then if you're doing a solid color, well, it'll be the same because well, it's all the same. But what you do is your very first loop right here, you push, in my case, the knitting needle through. Uh, like I said, Phillips uh, impact driver bits work really, really well for this, guys. So you don't have to go out and buy knitting needles in order to see if we can get that to focus a little better. There we go. So you don't have to go out and buy um, knitting needles in order to make this project work. But one of the tricks, if you do have knitting needles, that really helps to open it up, and one of my favorite tricks, you actually put the needles in side by side opposite ways, and it basically forces this slot open for you. Um, see how it doubles up the thickness. Um, the knitting needles that I have are a number nine, or a number a number nine. Um, but then when you take that out, you'll have a little loop right there. See that loop is where you put your other ends through. I try to take a little bit of time and I try to straighten it out and make sure it's in an orientation that I like and it seems like it's going to fit naturally. But then you take these two pieces of paracord and you feed them through here. If they don't want to feed very nice, you can always go back and you can get the knitting needles out or the Phillips head piece is out and you can reopen that hole up but you're going to just pull this and then you're basically going to cinch this down tight so at this point we have let's see if I can get my hands around here we have the two colors in the center we have the dark brown and we have the light tan we have this loose string over here and we have this loose string over here and then what you're going to do from there is you're going to go into a cobra weave. You're going to put the light tan in front and make a loop like this. You're going to cross the dark brown over the light brown, or over the dark brown, the dark brown over the tan, like this, almost like as if you're making a pretzel, it seems like. And then you're going to go behind and through for the dark brown. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna give this a pull and you're gonna pull it tight. Now, if you haven't done paracording before, whenever you do a cobra weave, whatever color is in front stays in front. So we're gonna come back with our left with this light tan. We're gonna go over these. We're gonna go across and over this with the dark brown in the front but then we're going to wrap our dark brown around behind and pull it through. So you'll see it looks like this right here. Kind of like you're tying a knot right there like that. And then you're going to pull this one tight again. And you're going to do this back and forth. Your light tan in front again. The brown over. Around behind and through. And you're going to keep doing this until you have about five or six of these little stitches back and forth. As you can see, you're starting to get your pattern of your dark brown on the outsides and your light brown is gonna be the color down your middle when you start with, whatever color you start with in the front is gonna stay in the front. Sorry that I just bumped you guys. But you're gonna keep working your way back and forth and when you get about I usually stop at about four to five stitches down. Uh, and here's something that I do that I notice nobody else really does. And I like this because it kind of cinches this top piece back together and pulls it tight right up here where these two round ones come back in. I spin it around and then I start going with a cobra, a double cobra back across. So. I put the light tan over the top, 
I put the dark brown behind and then I start working my way back towards where I started and I just try to make sure I keep it nice and tight um, so I put the tan back over dark brown behind and we're working our way back so you'll see that it'll double layer up and that's why they call it a double cobra is it double layers and you'll just keep working your way back up your lanyard towards where your head area would be and what this is going to do is it's going to add some thickness down here at the bottom which I could take it or leave it um, but like I said the reason that I really like doing it this way is because when you get far enough you're going to start pulling these two round braids back together and that actually makes not only does it make it look a lot nicer it also makes it seem like it functions better and if you're off on your size when you start it's always better to have too much than too little because if you have too little well you're going to go back and you're going to untie it when you get to this step because you're not going to have enough paracord to do what you need to do um, but I should have just barely enough to make this one work um, just enough to tie this off and then we'll get these ends melted over um, I actually have a pair of needle nose and a jewelers players give me just a second just to make sure it's good and snug I'm gonna pull it with the needle nose and the jewelers players because well while my hands are strong from doing this <laughs> that little bit of pieces on the end isn't really enough to work with very much so this is just enough that it kind of contains this round braid in here and it holds it in um, realistically I'd like one more stitch but I'm not gonna go back and undo it just to get one more stitch out of it uh, from there give me just a second and I'll grab these three very important parts what you're gonna do is you're gonna snip it so I leave about a eh, quarter to three-eighths of an inch roughly maybe not quite probably closer to a quarter inch and then I melt this pretty good just because I have our traditional lighter I, I melt it a little bit more when I have a traditional lighter and then I take the spoon I press it on the front and I wrap it around back and if you look right there it actually wraps around to the back and it kind of covers up this piece right here that's a good melt um, that's that's what you want to see you don't want this coming apart so you really do want to take that time and then like I said I wrap front to back so then I'll turn it around when I get to melting the tan and I'll get a good melt on this one as well and then I'll start front and I'll work my way around to the back again and you'll see that one's got a pretty good melt on it right there by my finger okay the next part is you're going to use these two down pulls are these two down spots right here these are going to be your first and your original two drops uh, that's why I was saying if you're using this for deer hunting it works nice because it's going to have two drops in it um, you're not getting real fancy or real over the top with it um, but there's the full length top to bottom so far but in order to tie drops what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick out about how long you roughly want it to be and you're going to want I usually use one hand space which is about two and a half inches for me and you're going to want to pull it back once and then you're going to want to pull this forward again so what you're going to have right now is about two and a half inches you want it to go about halfway back and then you want it to go forward and you're going to take this one 
and you're gonna wrap it around and the tighter you can get this wrap the better um, but you're gonna you're gonna wrap it around I wrap normally three times and then once you wrap it around you're gonna bring this tail piece and you're gonna bring it through your back loop and what that's gonna do is this is gonna create a noose once you pull it tight so you hold it here and you start pulling on this end and it'll actually you'll see right there how it kind of noosed up this piece right here and then you're gonna really want to cinch down on that and it noosed up basically this whole piece I got it a little loose at the top so I'm gonna have to retie this but from here all you have to do to make this and finish it is just cut this and then melt this off and uh, flatten it out so I'll bring you back once I've got them tight because it's kind of hard with the camera in the way to make a good tight noose and a good tight noose is what you want because you don't want to lose your calls okay we're back and that is the finished lanyard right there um, as you guys know it's got the round or the kind of spiral type weave to it it has a double cobra section here let me see if I can straighten that out for you so you can there we go now we got it straightened out it's got a nice double cobra braid right there um, you can see kind of how the weave goes around it and it's layered and then one thing I want to mention uh, when you get these nooses tied you wrap it around uh, I used to wrap it about eight times when I originally started because I was super afraid of it coming apart uh, once you learn how to do it, it about three wraps is good to go and you'll know you've got a good tight noose when you go to winch down on this and the piece that you put through this loop right here doesn't pull it back in past this first piece if when you pull down on this and this right here is coming back into this first loop you have it too loose untie it start again the last thing you want to do is lose a call because your noose isn't tight enough so I take it I get that and then when I'm done I melt it um, see if I can get a good picture of the melt right there and then I fold I massage it back over um, you can use the back end of a lighter. I mean, I, I've used the back end of a lighter when I've made them for people like on the spot and I didn't have my stuff with me. Um, but it definitely, it's a good melt. It covers up almost a half a braid or almost a half of a loop. It's, it's a good solid melt. Um, so right there is where we're at. Um, that's the first part right there. We have an entire lanyard ready to go um, two drops great lanyard for a deer call um, young dog hunter uh, young predator hunter any young hunter that only has two calls or only wants two calls um, not everybody carries a whole bunch of calls I know a lot of duck hunters carry a lot of calls though um, and me as a predator hunter I carry a lot of calls when I'm out hunting um, so from there we're going to do a neck band up here at the top uh, it's going to be a 10 inch long neck band that's going to be our next video and after that video we are going to do how to do multiple drops like this uh, on your way up here um, so you can fit on multiple drops like that um, I don't have the clips to do whistles right now so I'm not gonna be able to do a whistle but I can basically show you uh, it would be basically you just tie a noose on one end around the lanyard and then you tie a noose on the other end around the whistle clip so that's how you would do a whistle clip if you're doing a whistle clip for like uh, waterfall hunting so I hope you guys found this informative I know it was a long video and I'm sorry, but I really wanted to show you guys the details so you could do this on your own. Um, so let me know what you think down below in the comments. And I greatly appreciate your guys' feedback. And you guys have a great day.